Welcome, everybody. It is Saturday night. Happy New Year. New Year's Day. New Year's Eve. Uh, New Year's Day Eve. It's the Awakening World, our very first show, our debut. And it's wonderful to have all of you with us. We've got so many of our regular friends in the Zoom room. And I want to welcome all of you watching live on Facebook and our YouTube channels. And I want to invite you come on into the Zoom room. Um, we have really beautiful guests and presenters. You're going to meet them in a moment. And in the Zoom room, you can directly interact with us. Um, and if you're watching on Facebook and you haven't registered yet, um, let me explain what you're going to do. Go to globalpeacetribe.com. That's globalpeacetribe.com and register. It only takes about 30 to 60 seconds to register, basically giving us your email address. And if you choose to donate, we really appreciate that. And then what happens is you get an email that gives you the links to all three shows that we do every weekend. Every weekend, we do a Friday night edition of The Awakening World, a Saturday night edition of The Awakening World, and the different shows, and the Sunday, Sacred Sunday edition. And what we're going to be doing this year is every weekend taking a topic and exploring it, exploring it with our wonderful presenters, still having live music, but we're going to make it much more interactive. We're going to include you much, much, much more because we all are part of the Global Peace Tribe. You know, when the pandemic began, Deborah Giusti and I thought we would do uh, Saturday Night Alive just for a few weeks, maybe a couple of months while the pandemic happened. We never intended for it to become what it became, which was this wonderful gathering place every Saturday night for you as people came to watch and it became, started as a local Bay Area thing, then it kind of became a national thing. And then once Unify started carrying us, we went international. And now because of Unify and all of our broadcast partners, we have people from all over the world watching us. Um, and we did 90 straight Saturday night lives for the Global Peace Tribe. 90, never missed a Saturday night. But we realized it was time to evolve. And so the next evolution is this show you're watching tonight, this debut show, The Awakening World. Because that's what's happening. We as humanity must wake up. Wake up from the collective dream that all of us have been in to some degree. The dream of material possessions, the illusion of separation. Waking up to the dream of remembering that we are actually here to be caretakers of the earth. And caretakers of each other. We're waking up. And waking up is not always comfortable. Sometimes part of awakening is recognizing some of our habits, some of our choices, some of our behaviors that have had hurtful consequences, maybe on ourself, maybe on someone else. And that's part of awakening up, not from guilt or shame, quite the contrary. We want to wake up out of that, that illusion of guilt and shame and come into, hey, we all are part of this extraordinary experience of life. We all are a part of the unified field. And so through the Awakening World shows, we're gonna take different topics. Um, this weekend, it's what does the Awakening World mean? Next weekend, it's gonna be all about the weevolution. What is the weevolution? How can we participate in that? The weekend after that is Martin Luther King weekend. And we're going to be really exploring social and racial justice and what we all can do to make a difference and so on and so forth. So please join us for these shows on all three nights or all three days, Friday night, Saturday night and Sunday morning. We want to hear from you. And if you just want to kick back and watch, that's totally OK. But if you want to participate, you can turn your cameras on on Friday nights and on Sunday nights. And on Saturday night, we're going to dedicate our early shows and some of our after shows like tonight to hearing from you. So welcome, and again, if you haven't registered yet and you're watching on Facebook or YouTube, go to globalpeacetribe.com, register, come on into the Zoom room. We've got over 100 people here and join us. 
as I was designing the awakening world, and um, I decided as Deborah Juicy is on a hiatus, um, well, let's have a revolving group of co-hosts. And I am so grateful that my first co-host is Kristen Hoffman. Um, I met her through Saturday Night Alive. I'd heard her name for years. Everybody kept saying, Kristen Hoffman, oh my God, this amazing music, Kristen Hoffman. And we started doing this show, Saturday Night Alive, and Deborah kept saying, we've got to get Kristen Hoffman, we've got to get Kristen Hoffman well. Kristen Hoffman is not only an amazing musical force, but I think this is the fourth show now that she's co-hosted with me. And I've had the chance to really get to know her. And she has got such an amazing balance of extraordinary talent, profound care for the work that she does, profound Ooh. care for the people she works with, all of us. And she's really nice. She's kind. She's like this nice, kind person who's a brilliant artist. And I tell you, I was born and raised in LA. I worked in the entertainment industry all my life. To be that talented and that nice and that kind and that loving is an extraordinary combination. You are the representation of the awakening world. You are the model. I want to be Kristen Hoffman when I grow up. That's what I <laughs> Thank you for being my co-pilot. Oh, Scott, that was one of the most beautiful, sweetest intros I have ever received in my lifetime. Thank sure. you. And I do care. I care about you. I care about the show. I care about our co-awakening together here in this moment tonight. And I, that's what makes the awakening world so beautiful here is I know we all care. We all care so much about each other and the community and about our own growth. And here we are, the show tonight is called New Year's Evolutions. We are the awakening world. And all of us who have shown up tonight are taking that first step, that commitment to be here now and evolve together, wake up together. And showing up in that way, listening to your inner guidance and building community that supports this awakening is th these are the ingredients for exactly what we need to truly begin to awaken together and to continue awakening so thank you give yourself a big hug and say yes you have shown up and let's just be excited about all that's about to unfold tonight together the messages that we're about to remind ourselves, remember, and learn for the first time, and all of the possibilities that are coming this year, whether they be blissful, which we all enjoy blissful possibilities, but there's also going to be uncomfortable possibilities. There's also going to be challenging, craggly bits of the evolution, and how can we quietly tune in and just resolve ourselves to showing up to those moments as well in the mindset of openness and evolution. That's what this is all about. It's not just about all the happiness. That's beautiful. It is also about the little growing pains and how we learn to walk through this life and walk through the challenges with greater sense of grace, greater sense of knowingness that we're all connected and that this too shall pass. So. Thank you for being here, Scott. I'm so thrilled to be weaving with you again tonight. Uh, new beginnings all around. Yep. And, and thank um, you for the amazing guests that you've brought on. And I think you're going to tell us who do we got on the show tonight? Let's, let's figure that out. And I, I'll suggest, Scott, why don't you show a picture first? Because I realized we forgot to go over the order. So maybe you can show a picture first, and I will make sure that I am in alignment. Dearest Sister Jenna. Sister Jenna is the author of the recently released book, Meditation, Intimate Experiences with the Divine Through Contemplative Practices. As an acclaimed, trusted spiritual mentor and host of the America Meditating Radio Show, she is committed to bridging divides in societies and building relationships between global influencers. I love you, Sister Jenna. She is such a beautiful mentor in my life. Thank you for being here. Scott, I have to tell you, the introduction that you did for Kristen was spot on. Is it, Really, it's true, isn't it? I mean, she is 
that remarkable to be that talented and that kind is such that is heaven on earth is is people like that yeah i have my days too as well (laughs) and our next beautiful our next guest is uh nina palmieri Welcome, Nina. It's such an honor to have you. Nina is a master educator, Nawal woman, and wisdom keeper who shares her gift of divine perception to bring clarity and guide one home to their authentic self so that we can take personal responsibility for our lives. As a clear channel of the Divine Mother, her ever-growing community, a new earth movement, considers her a light-bearing guide and mentor. It's so beautiful to have you, Nina. Thank you for being here. Thank you so much for having me. I'm honored to be here. I'm very happy to be here. Welcome. We're looking forward to hearing from you. And our incredible creative is back, Keishi Chai, beautiful dancer, leader, wisdom keeper, teacher. Keishi Chai is a transformational performer, director, and dance leader, and is the founder of internationally acclaimed Belly Queen and Pure Dance. I have had the pleasure in this life of collaborating with Keishi many times and tonight I'm sure is going to be another great blessing. Thank you, Keishi. And Hereditary Chief Phil Lane Jr. Welcome, dear one. Uh, Chief Phil Lane Jr. is an enrolled member of the Yankatan, Dakota, and Chickasaw nations and is an internationally recognized leader in human and and community development, as well as just being one of the most incredible, inspiring, and big-hearted humans that I've known on this planet. Thank you for being here. It's always a joy and inspiration to be in your presence and to hear your beautiful, beautiful, heart, soul, moving music. So I'm I'm honored. I'm honored to be here in your presence, everybody's presence. Gratitude, (laughs) Dexy. Can't wait for your your sharing. And Ben Bowler, my dearest brother, Ben. Ben, I could say, I could talk about you for the next two hours and how much you have moved my life and this planet. Uh, Ben Buller is the executive director of Unity Earth, empowering worldwide solutions for unity, purpose, and peace. Ben has a history of innovation in spiritual tourism and global events dedicated to healing, uplifting, uniting, and inspiring. Ben, can't wait to hear from you. Thanks for being here. Dawn Red Sun will be sharing music tonight. I'm so excited to receive Dawn's incredible gifts. Dawn is a musical alchemist whose mission is to write medicinal music that raises the state of well being within oneself on physical, mental, emotional, and spiritual levels. I love you, Dawn. Thank you for joining us, and we are really looking forward to your music. And Guinevere, Guinevere, I don't have your bio in front of me, but I have to say Guinevere Bridge, and Scott's going to be sharing your full bio later, but Guinevere Bridge is an incredible, intuitive, and cosmic divining channel, I would say. She is deeply connected to our planet Gaia, and she brings through the messages that are most important for us to tune into in the now so that we can live our fullest lives in the most exuberant ways possible. Thank you, Guinevere, for being here with us tonight. I love you, dear one. Thank you. I'm so honored. And I think that that concludes our, I, I'm Kristen Hoffman, by the way. I know Scott introduced me, but I, um, th- I'm just going to say I'm a, I'm a being and I'm here and I'm here to serve <laughs> and I serve with music. I serve through silence as well and togetherness. So my commitment tonight is just to be present and support and share when it's my time and let us dive in. So, our first incredible guest this evening. Oh, I bow at her beautiful (laughs) feet. 
Sister Gemma, I, I, I just... And I rise, I rise <laughs> at your beautiful presence. I think we make a great couple. Happy New Year. <laughs> Happy New Year. I Happy can't New imagine... Year, I, I just can't imagine a more perfect way to start into the space of the new year than a meditation with Sister Jenna. And Thank you. We, are, we are about to receive uh, the gift of her voice, of her heart, of her spirit, of her love affair with silence. She really has spent so much of this life cultivating presence and and a relationship with silence. And it's evident when she speaks that it comes from that incredible, vast knowingness of that space that, that weaves the realms. She's here, mm. she's so <laughs> present, yet she is also connected to so many other realms. And you will mm. feel it, and I'm so excited. <laughs> I'm gonna read your bio to make it more no, official. No, don't. don't, don't, don't. Well, let me read a, just one minute, Sister Jenna. <laughs> Okay, Scott's you did already. Go over the you did already. I did? Okay. You okay. did. You did. Happy New Year, everyone. Again, what does a bio do justice in terms of defining the, the the real narrative of any soul? However, it's my honor to be with all of you today and to move into 2022 with a lot of optimism, a lot of uh, courage, a lot of awakening. Scott's question about what a, an awakening world looked like, for me, it just felt like we all had our self-esteem. We finally gained back our self-esteem and our self-respect. And just for a moment, can you just visualize 7.5 billion people walking with their self-respect and self-esteem? What an awakened world that would be. And so how, where does the assignment begin. It begins behind your eyes. You know, Kristen sounds like, you know, makes it sound like I'm just really this deeply silent person. I don't know, but I do know that last night for our New Year's Eve get together and soiree, my resolution was to deepen the energy of silence inside of me so that my presence can remove the sorrow and the suffering of souls. So let me explain what that means. That I've stopped serving thoughts that are connected to limited beliefs, that I'm just a woman, I'm just Jamaican, Indian, American, that I'm just a Republican or a Democrat. I think that the more we are attached to those limited beliefs, the more peaceless we become. And when you're peaceless, you can't emanate the energy of stillness, of silence. So the most important thing I, I'd say for 2022, for all of you as we get ready for a very powerful time together, is to begin to practice to live from the world behind your eyes. What are you thinking? What's the potential that God sees in you that he wants you to see in you. Can you see it? You will never be able to become what you can't see. And in your practice of inner silence, it'll give you a chance to see you the way the divine sees you, and then you'd stop wasting time. So what I'd like to do for all of us today as each of us in the room, whether you're on Facebook or in the webinar, in the room, whatever and wherever you might be, can I please ask you to pause for a moment? Maybe all you did was press a button to get on air with us, but think about all the energy the coordinators went through to bring us all together for you and for ourselves. An awakened person is very in touch with the behind the scenes investment, the intention that goes behind everything in life. They want to see how best they can nurture the intention. So the setting of the stage for our session today and our 2022 
I'd like to invite you to give up a few C's in your life. And then we'll go into the meditation. Give up taking the C of criticism, comparison, competition. Think of it. When those three C's are out of your consciousness, how awakened you would be on the planet. What would be your belief system? So let's take a little time to meditate. And I am hearing some movement online somewhere. So I'm hoping that it won't disturb the meditation when we go into it. So sit up straight, please. Keep your eyes gently, just gently opened kind of creating a peripheral vision as if you're seeing at the sides of your, your eyes, but you're looking straight. Become aware of the world behind your eyes, the one that's invisible, but becomes visible in your presence, in the way you look through your eyes, in the words that you speak. Just pay attention to the world behind your eyes until you can feel the sense of silence gently emerging for you. Imagine for a little while the original nature of the soul is silence. peace. If my original nature is peace and silence and stillness, what am I making effort for? Or what's getting in my way? Perhaps I just need to live more from the world behind my eyes and be aware that the original nature and religion of the soul is peace. Allow the energy of stillness and silence and peace to awaken inside of you naturally. It's already there inside of you. Your stillness, your peace, your power. For the rest of the year, is it possible to keep reminding yourself to travel from that world? the world behind your eyes. To check and change what you need to. To remove criticism, comparison and competition from your vision. And to simply replace your vision with compassion. Empathy. To be detached, yet very engaged.
So let us take just a few more seconds. Close your eyes. And everyone in this event and in the webinar, send them your blessings and your good wishes and observe how it makes you feel. Bless everyone with your good wishes and pure feelings. This is your renewal and this is your new year. Thank you all so much, Scott. And thank you, Kristen, for inviting me to ground us and to get us into, you know, the movement from within out as we awaken to a world where we just have our self-esteem about us because of our intimate connection to source. So thank you very much, have a wonderful, wonderful evening and an even better year. Thank you, guys. Om Shanti. Before you leave, um, yeah. first of all, thank you for just bringing us down into such a connected space. Isn't it amazing how much more connected we feel when we slow down? Yeah. Thank you for that. Remind. Dear Scott, I just want to jump in for a second because you have Jay spotlighted. I think, no? No. Oh, okay, sorry. I was seeing him spotlighted. Okay. Um, but I do want to put the spotlight on your new book. Um, and this is yeah. really exciting. Uh, tell yeah. us about, first of all, people, um, I want to encourage everyone to go to americameditating.org. americameditating.org. That's uh, Sister Jenna's website. Tell us about your book. Can I read something from it? Yes, I would love Is that. Is it okay? Yes, please. It's, it's coming out on 02-02-2022. And I thought that was quite auspicious by the publishers, but the opening of the book is A Time to Choose. We find ourselves right now in the age of great transformation one of the most consequential moments in human history. These are indeed the times that the great prophets and seers throughout the millennial have spoken about. Mankind has experienced and survived many eras of tremendous change. Of course, yet with each turn of the spiral, the permutation becomes more amplified as if there will be one final revolution of the cycle that turns it all around so we can start anew one more time. This is about our mystical experiences. I have the privilege of traveling with about over 25 co-authors, everyone, from Jean Houston to Temple Hayes to Sister JNT and host of other great minds about mystical experiences that are occurring. And I think we need to talk more about those things, what's waking us up from our sleep and what's keeping us awake from falling back asleep. And so Scott, thank you for highlighting the book. It's really a baby project in which the producers really had to encourage me to do this. And I'm glad that I did. It was very transformative for me Louis Gossett Jr., who is a five-time Academy Award winner, has already read the book, and he said, this is something you've really got to sink through. But I loved what Kathy Hughes said, who's the founder of Radio One and the second largest media, African-American media mogul in America. She says, on every page, every page, the book comes to life for you. That was big. So I'm looking forward to seeing what, how it's going to unfold. So everybody, you can pre-order this on Amazon now. Uh, yeah. it's just called Meditation. So if you go to Amazon or you go to her website, go to americameditating.org and click here where it says pre-order on Amazon. And there's the book. Um, and let's also put that, I'm going to absolutely order it right now. I'm putting it. <laughs> Please do. 
and I'm proceeding to the checkout and I <laughs> ordered your book. So Scott, I love you. I love you. It's all it's already reached number one in new release in mysticism. So there's a life to it. Thank you. Everybody now we should order a book for the new year resolution so we can get our copies. Thank you, Scott. Really you appreciate know, that. That's one of the wonderful things. Um, I just placed my order. As I, uh, for example, we had Andrew Harvey recently. Mm, I love and Andrew. I, oh, he's the best. And Andrew has <laughs> a book uh, called Engoldenment. Uh, and it's all about uh, his take on Kabir. So just like this, I ordered it online. And when it arrived, oh my God, it's just been so beautiful to read his poetry. So now I have a meditation book coming and definitely I can use some support with better meditation. So Sister <laughs> Janet, God bless you. Thank you so much for being with us. Thank you so much, my good Sister wishes. Jenna. Thank Bye you. everyone. Have a great, great time. Om Shanti. Om, Om Shanti. I get to introduce the next person. Um, and some of you may have heard this story before, but it is a powerful story. Um, and of course, I'm referring to my dear friend, Guinevere Bridge. Um, I've known Guinevere for well over 20 years. Um, I first uh, met her when I booked her on a television show. Uh, I did uh, a lot of television shows on UFOs and crop circles, but also on psychics. And I was the wrangler for psychics. And um, <laughs> uh, anyway, I met Guinevere that way. And many years passed that we didn't connect, but somewhere along the line, we became Facebook friends. And then uh, a little over 10 years ago, my wife passed away. And I hadn't heard from Guinevere in a while. I think maybe she sent me a condolence message, perhaps. About six months after my wife died, I was here in the house and I went walking through my bedroom really quickly. And all of a sudden, just for a flash, I saw my deceased wife on our bed smiling at me. It was just like this quick flash. You know how those things are. You're like, did I just make that up? Or what? 15 minutes later, I come back to my computer and there's a Facebook private message from Guinevere who says, Dear Scott, we haven't spoken in quite a while, but I want to let you know that your wife just came to me and she wanted to let me know that she wanted me to pass on the message to you that yes, you did just see her smiling. That's the extraordinary talent, the amazing ability to drop in that Guinevere Bridge has. And I could spend an hour telling you other stories about her remarkable ability to have one foot firmly in this world and one foot in the next world. And she's going to provide that talent for us right now by giving us a forecast of this new year. So um, Guinevere, thank you so much for being with us. We all are pretty eager, a little excited about what 2022 is going to bring to us, bring to humanity, and bring to us as we awaken together. So the spotlight is on you, my friend. Thank you so much, Scott. You constantly humble me, and it's taking all my power not to cry, because I embrace you with all my heart, and I don't have words to express what I feel. So I'm doing the best I can. You turned great. <laughs> and thank you so much. I'm so honored to be part of this. And I'm so honored to be starting this year with you. So let's talk about this year. This year is super intense. Now, I want to start with it's a very powerful year. Maybe the most powerful year for a lot of people from the very beginning of what they experienced as their timeline. Okay. And so I want people to embrace the idea that powerful does not mean easy. Powerful requires incredible strength and powerful requires each and every individual to go so deep into the kind of world you wanna share with people around you from love. It's so important. If we start with the numerology alone, 2022 is profound. One of the reasons why is it 
takes us directly to the heart, okay? So it takes us into the chalice of the heart. And that actually came up in the actual reading as well, because I did the numerology and the read on it. And it was talking about the chalice. It was asking us to go on the grail quest for our heart center. And so that's really important. But here's the deal with those two, two twos, right? That's three twos in the year. Each two represents something. We have two on the ground, which is the physical world we know. We have two in the heart and the mind coming together as one, which takes us to the Hopi prophecy of walking through the portal with our hearts and our heads connected in harmony. And the last two is the crown two, which connects us to God, deity, goddess, however each person experiences it. And that big, beautiful zero is divine force, right? The most powerful month is going to be February because we have February 2nd, 2022, which is in numerology a 10. It's the turning of the wheel, okay? Then we have February 20th, 2022, which is also, you guessed it, a 10 another turning of the wheel, okay? Then we have February 22nd, 2022. It is mind blowing how much the month of February is asking us to go into intense forms of harmonization and balance. We have 10, 10 and 12, okay? 10, 10. So we have the physical 10, the turning of our physical world. We have the spiritual 10, the turning of our spiritual world and 12, connects us directly to the hanged man, which brings me to the reading portion of this, not the numerology portion. The reading portion was talking about the fact that we were supposed to come to the heart, divine masculine and divine feminine. So whether you consider yourself feminine or masculine, no matter what your gender happens to be, you're being asked to bring two different elements. I don't make this stuff up, it blows my mind. Men, or people who feel gendered toward masculine are supposed to bring their highest wisdom, their knowledge and their expertise, the mind. And women are supposed to bring their heart, their most emotional nurturing process. And the two are supposed to come together again. This is a combining of forces of sacred masculine and sacred feminine to hold that chalice underneath the hanged man right? Because he's hanging upside down to learn. He needs to go into wisdom. The pain is to teach him how to be in balance. And that feminine force under his head is like a baptism, which is very, very powerful. And then there was a second form of alignment. And this was more important. So I hope everybody's going to pay attention and take, the, take this as their takeaway. Elder, and this would be um, Generation X and Boomers, these, these groups are supposed to turn and look at the millennials and Generation Z and give proper assist, assistance downward. So you wanna see that down there, there's despair and hopelessness. And the only way to pull them out of despair and hopelessness is to give them laughter, wisdom, love, nurturing, and answers. They want answers. They don't wanna hear more talk. They're watching the world around them suffering. Today, here in Virginia, it was 75 degrees on January 1st. I was sweating. So the physical form of the reading was talking about the fact that we as a ship, you want to think about the whole human race is on a ship. Our ship is strong. We can make it. But the waters are rough. So if we don't navigate with calm, with each other, in unification and in peace, we're gonna feel tossed by the physical challenges coming at us. I have tornado warnings tonight. Wind blew over a tree and it knocked into the power lines as I watched. So we have crazy weather all around the United States and of course, all around the world. And this is one of the reasons why this unifying factor and working hard for our dreams and working hard to give the dreams to the youth is more important than it's ever been. And, you know, with the numerology alone, it turns us back to the year 2000. So we're in a 20 year open cycle and it gets more intense. We had two neutron stars that were absorbed by, 
black holes in the last five years. And those pulses went through our planet and our bodies, causing us to expand and contract. When people are talking about portals, these neutron stars are creating a star force to open portals to do a healing that's total and you truly unique. I've never seen anything like it. And because it's this rare and this beautiful, we have to be the most kind, we have to be the most mindful, and we have to be the most inclusive. Everybody has a piece of the puzzle. And with that knowledge, and this is the, the basis of the 2022 energy, is that everybody needs to go deeper into personal study, deeper into meditation, deeper into connecting with that heart mind spiritual force to unify because women in general are going to be experiencing the pain of the planet and men in general are going to be experiencing the psychological distress coming from the women which we're already witnessing so this unification is genuinely key we are one together we're not one apart so very powerful stuff going on and my heart could not even <laughs> You know, there's, there's so many things that you've said that are really important. I just want to anchor a couple of them. Yes. Isn't it interesting that both you and Sister Jenna emphasized compassion, kindness, and in my introduction of Kristen, talking about her kindness. And so I think that that's a really important, let's just all as Global Peace Tribe members, let's commit to being more kind and more compassionate. And when somebody is different than the way we want them to be or the way we think they should be? Can we find that compassionate understanding? And I'm really hearing that. I also really like how you brought in the different generations and that it's time for us all to support the different generations. Um, so that's really beautiful. Guinevere, any other last, last things you wanna make sure that we know as you look at the forecast? Um, well, uh, I'm covered in the loveliness of a loveliness of ladybugs. <laughs> Got one right here. Oh my gosh, look at that. Yeah, we can see her. Beautiful. It, it landed on me as, as I finished talking about it. Um, let me let me look at this. Okay, so a metaphor, a good metaphor, a good takeaway is male, male identifying people need to see themselves this year as the Merlin. And female identified individuals have to see themselves more along the lines of Kuan Yin because we're in the middle of the Kali Yuga. So that female compassion mixed with the Merlin uh, magic <laughs> is really gonna open the door so that we can cross through this portal as whole humans and actually see a reparation taking place to this planet and to the people in this planet. And of, of course, my loveliness of ladybugs, which have been um, crawling all over me. <laughs> I will get up my Merlin hat and uh, I do that. Well, we did it together. You were on my All Hallows Eve show every year. So I'll do the Merlin energy. That's beautiful. Um, I want to remind everybody that Guinevere has so many things available. She uses Linktree. So that's L-I-N-K-T-R dot E-E. -E. You go there and it's a wonderful place to, if you haven't been to Linktree before, it's a great way to connect. And her page is called Guinevere's Enchantments. And she's got so many things going on. She's a TikTok star. Um, <laughs> I love her TikToks. She has a YouTube channel. Uh, she's got on Instagram ceremonial makeup. You've seen her come to, she's been on our show as, as Persephone, as Saraswati, as Mrs. Claus last week. So if you want to learn how to design different ceremonial makeup, definitely go to Guinevere. Um, and Guinevere, is there anything else you want to make sure that people know that you provide? That's, uh, yes, absolutely. Uh, this year, I'm working on producing a Oracle deck. Uh, I've been channeling it in over a course of time, and finally, all the elements came together, and I'm in the middle of creating it. I think you have the image I sent you of one of the cards that's complete. That's right. Let me pull that up right now. Here it is. Um, and tell us about this Oracle deck. And here's the image you sent me. Thank you so much. The illustration that we're looking at here as one of the complete pieces, this was a, um, a event that took place called Standing Rock. 
and anybody who's aware of Standing Rock that took place in 2016 knows that all the nations came together as one at um, in North Dakota, and I was there. And this image that you're seeing is the geodesic dome and the teepee combined together, which is masculine and feminine as one, and also the unification of all of us in Turtle Island coming together to open our dreams together. The deck itself is guardians and guides and has a very beautiful energy that's very balanced. And it's just, I, I, I don't even have words because there's so much in the deck. It is uh, going to help people navigate this next episode in their lives. Well, you know, certainly once the deck is complete, we will have, we'll do like a Sacred Sunday show with you and you can actually show people how to work with the deck, okay? I would love to, it would be so amazing. Okay, Guinevere, God bless you. Thank you so much for giving us insight into this upcoming year. Thank you so much. Thank you so much, Scott, I love you. Love you too. And to introduce our next presenter, here's Christian. Guinevere, that was incredible as always. I feel like you bring through such potent, powerful imagery and everything's so clear. And I love that it is so clear because I, I can really take it in and digest it and have some very clear imagery to take home with me and, and ponder. So thank you so much. Kristen, I took myself off mute just to say something specifically to you. Okay. When you were talking at the um, onset of the show, I had a vision, okay? It like literally punched me in the third eye wow. and it was beautiful. It was two Tauruses, T-O-R-U-S, Taurus, mm -hmm. the energy that inverts inside of itself coming together over your energy and they overlapped in a almost perfect um, uh, figure eight, but they were overlapped and connected in the middle. Oh. So this literally means that your ability to generate really powerful things that resource you on both levels. When I was talking about the twos is amplified this year. And that, that's all, I won't take any more time. I just oh. wanted to let you know because it was spontaneous. And when I have spontaneous visions, it's not right for me not to share. Wow, thank you so much. And I also learned my birthday is 10, 10. And as, as, we, as you were talking about the 10 and the 10, I feel like I learned something else about my, my being and birth. So gratitude, gratitude. I hope we connect soon again. Okay, and it's my great honor to introduce and call forward our next guest, Ben Bowler. I love you, Ben. Thank you for being here. Let me just tell everyone a little bit about you. Ben Bowler is the Executive Director of Unity Earth, empowering worldwide solutions for unity, purpose, and peace. Ben has a history of innovation in spiritual tourism and global events dedicated to healing, uplifting, united, uniting, and inspiring. Through platforms such as Unity Earth, World Unity Week, and Peace Weekend, Ben is dedicated to facilitating a greater unity and wholeness of the whole human family and all of life. And I have to say, I've gone on numerous journeys with Ben around this planet, and we've had the gift of time in person together, but also over the last few years, um, just that time to check in and keep our dreams and visions flowing. And I am just so grateful for this being in my life and in our world. Ben is one person who is truly listening to his call and opening up a container for us all to engage in this great awakening and the change that we are called to at this time. So Ben, thank you, thank you for all you do and thank you for being here. Oh, beloved sister Kristen, it's an honor. Thank you for inviting me and I wanna echo uh, Scott's you know, beautiful words about you uh, at the beginning of today. And what a blessing it is here to be here on day one. Uh, for the awakening world and, and day one for this brand new year. So thanks again to Scott and to you, Kristen, for your loving co-creations and kindness that have brought and woven all this together. And thank you to Sister Jenna's incredible depth meditation and, and beautiful insights uh, from Guinevere. It actually struck me while Guinevere was speaking of Power of Two, last year, 2021, as we were generating the field for World Unity Week, which is in June, of course, around the mid-year solstice, um, it, it came through the field to really declare last year as year one. Scott, you may remember after 2020 it was such a, you know, a year of, of transitions of endings and beginnings. And so the 2021 was year one of the new decade of the new dispensation, however one wanted to see it in, the, in one's own perspective. And as Guinevere was talking just now, it really struck me the rightness of us being in, in year two. 
and that this is very much a two year and uh, and the coming together and the harmony of those things so the awakening world as we think into it and dream into that and feel into that i love the name of this show uh, of this incredible platform and you know it strikes me that it is something that in its very essence talks about uh, what we do in community what we do together um, the awakening world, while it may begin behind our eyes, as Sister Jenna so beautifully invited us, it must it must necessarily come out into expression through um, beautiful and beloved co-creations like this uh, weaving, this show, The Awakening World, and, and so many other things that are coming forth. So when I think of The Awakening World, Scott and Christian, I think of all the incredible co-creations uh, and weavings and how we show up together and what we can do together to really um, uh, coalesce uh, the, the power and influence in the world that is navigated by truth, beauty and goodness, that is directed by compassion, which is targeted towards love, unity and peace. And while we've so many have been striving for so long, for for decades and millennia and for centuries in this direction, perhaps it ups, is it up to us uh, this year to really carry that forward and carry that work forward. And so many extraordinary people are here right now in this room, in this space, in this broadcast and beyond uh, that are responding to the call. I, I came across something a friend shared on social media today, and I just wanna take a minute to have a look at this graphic. And as everybody is uh, completing the, 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 the final line there, just to think about our agency and the, and the impact that we are having and the impact that we uh, will continue to have together and many more and many more join these efforts. And what flowers are we planting together? What are we doing together? What is it like this show, The Awakening World? This is part of what we are planting together. And I'm really honored to share with you uh, for those who may or may not be aware of it, we've started day one of the seven days of rest. And the seven days of rest goes from January 1 to 7 every year, now in its fifth year. And uh, I'm really happy that Scott and Kristen uh, were uh, open to sharing this with all the community here because it's an incredibly beautiful field and space that has been created by Dr. Shelley Ostroff and Jan Golding in Jerusalem. And after five years, it is a flourishing, self-organizing field of ceremony, indigenous offerings, um, incredible music, uh, daily uh, practices. Um, and it's extraordinary how much the themes of rebirthing, nourishing, cultivating, communing, shaking, valuing, and celebrating are these years seven themes. And it's happening now. Today is day one. Uh, day two here in the Pacific, as we go into the seven days of rest, such a beautiful way to begin the year with these incredible offerings. In fact, I was very privileged earlier today to be a part of an opening ceremony with Kristen and uh, with Sister Jenna and, and other amazing people from around the world to begin and to convene um, in the ceremonial beginning of the seven days of rest. What's amazing about it, if you go down to the gallery, and we'll put the, the link in the web uh, in the different uh, chats, if you go into the gallery, you'll get a sense of how many extraordinary offerings are being offered uh, every day uh, from here until January 7th. Beautiful. These are, this is part of the flowers that we are planting together uh, for an awakening world. And there are so many beautiful retreats, drum gatherings, stories of grandmother's ecology. I mean, it's an incredible field of content and experiences and offerings, and it's all completely given freely. I really want to um, shout out and honor Shelley Ostroff and Jan Golding for their tireless, generous work in doing this. It's an, it really is a beautiful uh, gift to the world and growing in resonance every day. So let me encourage you, please go to uh, Seven Days of Rest and partake of the goodness that there. It really is truly, truly beautiful. And this is all part of the awakening world. As we go across all the different events, it was not long ago, uh, we completed uh, enlightening our way together around the December solstice with beloved uh, Chief Phil Lane Jr., who we'll be hearing from a little bit later uh, on tonight's show. And before too long, also coming up, I think you mentioned, Scott, about Martin Luther King, our friends at the Sign Network uh, and all of the community coming together again to do the MLK Beloved Community Convergence. And you can connect with this 
on Facebook, there's an event you can go to the MLK Beloved Community Convergence. Again, there are op there are ceremonies, there are beautiful presentations, there's deep and powerful sharing workshops and experiences to be had uh, had there. Whoops, sorry, I've gone somewhere else. Um, and I'll stop sharing there, but the MLK Beloved Community is coming up just in, in a few weeks time, which is really, really beautiful. And the last thing I want to uh, just seed into the field here is that we are coming up and into the third World Unity Week. And we're so excited, Scott. We're, we're so grateful for your support over, over the years. And Kristen, your amazing support and contributions to that artistically and all your energy and spirit and Brother Phil and, and so many others. Um, and we are gearing up for this year, which is going to be the, the two coming together. So World Unity Week, uh, 18th to the 15th of June this year. It's across the mid-year solstice. Again, is an opportunity for all around the world, um, us to come together, these community of communities, these groups of groups that are orientating around this unified field of peace and harmony. Uh, WorldUnityWeek.org, you can get connected, keep an eye out for that. More and more is coming. So this is all part of the flowers that we're planting together for this year and the years to come. And congratulations to you, Scott. Congratulations to you, Kristen. What a beautiful offering and a contribution to the field of unity and peace is this The Awakening World. It's been an honor to be with you here tonight. Oh, thank you, Ben. And you know, as everybody can see, I mean, one of the things that's exciting is how we all come together and collaborate and co-create. Um, and uh, I want to acknowledge your good friend and partner, John Raymer and Summer Raymer in the Sign Network, because right now there are over 100 groups and pages watching us because of the Sign Network. And that's another example of how we all collaborate. And John and I are now coordinating on the Martin Luther King weekend. So there's a way that we're all coming together, you know, through our online offerings, building community, letting people know. And I, I want to say I've done the um, seven days of rest the last two days, actually. I've been doing the one with Gary Malkin and Teresa Collins, um, and they've done a wonderful job. Gary's music and the Sarah McCrum videos, and it's been really, really beautiful. So thank you for putting that together. And the, I think the one website you didn't show that I want to let people know about is the Facebook page. A lot of you, of course, are on Facebook right now. And if you go to facebook.com forward slash seven days of rest, that's another way to find out about what's happening um, uh, as well. Um, and here it is. So um, thank you so much for putting this together and, uh, and representing your, your continent. You know, you're, again, this is a global peace tribe. And uh, thank you, Ben, for representing so beautifully your continent. Thank you. Uh, it's my pleasure, Scott and Kristen. And yes, John Rehmer and Summer Rehmer are incredible examples and avatars of the kind of generosity of spirit of giving, as are Shelley, Ostroff and Jan Golding, who created the Seven Days of Rest. And they're working so hard and tirelessly to put it forward for everybody. So we get inspired by each other. And through that, that optimism and that hope and that energy that lifts us all uh, in a rising wave of peace, unity, love, goodness, compassion, and positivity, of which all, Kristen, you are such a shining example as, as people are reflecting tonight. So it's been my honor and privilege and pleasure to be with you. Thank you, Scott. Thank you, Kristen. Thank you, Ben. Thank you, ben. year of collaboration with you. All right. Oh, I think this is you, Scott. That's right, it is. I yeah, get... it's your moment. This week's Wisdom Jewel, and we love um, the Wisdom Jewels. I want to thank Jay and Jan. Uh, it was Jan's birthday on Friday, so they're uh, off celebrating today. But um, every week they create these little two-minute, three-minute video of Wisdom Jewels, which are quotes all around the theme. And of course, tonight's theme is the Awakening World. So let's take a look at this week's Wisdom Jewels.
so much wisdom in so many ways. And I, I want to acknowledge each and every one of you um, uh, in our early Zoom Room show today, some of the wisdom that came through from all of you. And I'm watching right now in the chat box, wisdom. So I want to acknowledge the wisdom that's coming forth as all of us slow down, like Sister Jenna did such a beautiful job of helping us to slow down, dropping in, going inside. This is such a powerful time. And I'm really honored to be playing my role in helping to connect. Um, uh, I love bringing people together. I love bringing community together. And it's an honor. As we are moving forward, we are still kind of figuring out, okay, what is the Global Peace Tribe? What are we going to do? And I want to let people know that we are still going to do special events. Uh, in fact, um, we're planning a special event with our beloved Kristen Hoffman, probably on Valentine's night. Uh, we'll announce that soon. Um, and another big part of the Global Peace Tribe is just supporting each other when our various members are in need. I want to acknowledge, I just learned today that um, one of our broadcast partners is the Enlightened World Network. And Ruth Anderson, who runs that, her home burned down in Colorado. There's these big fires that took place in Colorado two nights ago, and Ruth Anderson's home burned down. So probably next week we will be raising money to support Ruth, if that's what you'd like. Um, I want to acknowledge that we support our community members. And so I want to take a minute to, in this right now to just to send love to some of our community members. Um, many of you know Cornflower, um, our beloved brother. I want us to just send some love to Cornflower and specifically his mother, who's had a series of strokes. So blessings and grace. Cornflower's mother. Maximum grace to Ruth Anderson and her family. And I want to spend special blessings to our Deborah Giusti, our co-founder of Global Peace Tribe, for her radiant health and for her health to improve. And for anybody else that you want to put love out to, anybody in the chat box, I encourage you to uh, put a name in and I will read it um, just for a moment because that's what we do. We come together and we support each other. And we're still learning how to support each other. Um, I'm really proud that Saturday Night Live raised over $150,000 for people and individuals. So um, we will continue to do fundraising. We'll continue to support our community and always remember that the greatest blessing is maximum grace. And again, to be clear, Cornflower himself is taking care of his mother uh, who has had a series of strokes. He's okay himself, but it's blessings for him. And you know, that's one thing to remember. Often it's the caregivers that really need our support. You know, I so many times, because I work a lot with people that are going through health crises, and the person who's got the cancer, sometimes even the person who's got the terminal cancer, they kind of sometimes are in the, the more enlightened state because they're getting ready to move on and they're getting a lot of love. It's the caregiver that's doing the cleaning and making the food and doing all sorts of work beyond the scenes that often needs our love and our support. So let's always remember to love the caregivers and all of you who have been caregivers. Thank you so much. Um, so just a few uh, for Percy Hilo, healing to his brother, Hank Holzer, and sister Delilah Kinski, Maximum Grace. Um, and right now I did hear Dr. Laura suggesting Maximum Grace for all creatures of Mother Earth and Mother Earth herself. Maggie asking for us to uh, bless Mary and James Cooper. Lilith Rogers asking for us to send healing to Lois Benson. Uh, Mary Noonan uh, just asking us to pray for positive change. 
Omashar, blessings to his mother, Kate, during her current health challenge. Suzanne, just asking for love to everybody. Nora Hansen, to her daughter, Michelle, happily three months pregnant with a little baby in her tummy. Isn't that beautiful that we have the cycles of life, uh, those that are leaving our world and those that are coming into the world. Teresa Lee's blessings to brother Mike, who was the caregiver for her mother who passed in July. And so on and so forth. Thank you so much, everybody. Um, I'm gonna read just a few more. And while I do that, I want to just remind you that if you can, please do support us by uh, supporting our, this is the tax deductible place. So if you go to supportgpt.com, that's how you can um, get tax deductions. And anybody who provides $250 or more, I will personally connect with you and we will read a poem or we will sponsor or support an organization of your choice. So that's something that we're adding. Any donation of $250 or more, we'll dedicate two or three minutes to um, uh, providing you an opportunity to share a poem or share a thought, or if there's an organization you want us to highlight, we're gonna do that. So these are just some of the ways that we are growing and evolving. We will continue to grow and evolve. I wanna thank um, those of you who have registered and anybody who's registered at one of the higher levels, $75 and up, you'll be part of our supporters and we'll have monthly supporters meetings to get your input and your feedback. So we're growing and we're evolving because of you. Thank you so very, very much. And now I'm gonna turn it back over to my wonderful co-host and collaborative partner, Kristen Hoffman. Oh, wonderful. Well, I can't imagine a better space to support than this incredible Global Peace Tribe community. You're truly doing great work here, Scott. And I think it's time for some music. It definitely feels time for some music. Absolutely. Let's do it. So here we go. I have the great honor to introduce Don Redson. Don Redson is a musical alchemist originally hailing from Germany and based in Los Angeles for almost 10 years. Her mission is to write medicinal music that raises the state of well-being within oneself on physical, mental, emotional, and spiritual levels. She works with vibrational instruments such as sound bowls, the harmonium, and recently started embarking on a new journey with the harp. Dawn's music is, in is intentionally minimalistic so as to leave things simple, raw, and open and give the mind a chance to settle and the body to rest. She has released music online and is continuously working on new projects for our ears and heart. And beyond the realms of music, Dawn Redson is a spiritual mentor studying under the divine wings of Nina Palmieri, who we will hear from very shortly, the founder of a new earth movement. Having been on the path of awakening and self-empowerment, she provides a deep state, uh, sorry, a deep and safe container for growth and expansion through self-love, sacred sexuality coaching, and Ayurvedic healing massage. Ah, oh, Dawn. I love your work. You're doing such beautiful, beautiful work in this world. And we are going to be blessed by some music. I'm so, so grateful to just be able to receive. Thank you for being here with us. Thank you so much for having me. Uh, such an honor to be here. And I will be singing a song that uh, I received and it is basically a song about really transmuting grief and calling on for divine help um, as so to really alchemize pain and bring in joy and gratitude for the ones that have left us.
Oh, so beautiful and haunting, Don. I feel like that's, it's like haunting angelic presence. I feel the river of sadness that we all carry and then that pure, pure healing love in that piece. Thank you so much. And Don will be back a bit later. And I know Scott's going to share where we can find. Yeah, we can. I'm kind of stunned, Don. That was, it's always so wonderful when we have new people on the show that we haven't had before. And God, thank you so much. So we can find Don on Spotify. Um, and uh, so just go to open.spotify.com open.spotify.com and then put in Dawn Red Sun and you'll find her. And um, she has a brand new release that's especially beautiful. Tell us a little, just briefly a little bit about, about this release. Uh, and how do we pronounce it, Jen Seitz? So I'm half German and yeah, it's basically a German word. It's called Jenseits. Uh, and it has the same meaning as something that you can't describe because it's so beyond so basically it means beyond and the song is about um, the passing of my cousin uh, in 2018 and so I received it the night that she passed and it was like one of the most painful and beautiful creations that I've ever done and so also I've never written in German and it's it's English and German at the same time so it was like a a really new process for me to write and then I also fulfilled one of my biggest dreams which was to record with a string quartet and so it was recorded all live and yeah it was just such a magical recording when we're all getting together and I just released it on the 26th which was her birthday as well so uh, yeah, I would love everybody to hear it. It's a very powerful piece. I have to say, I have been following Dawn on Spotify for about a year now. And so if you follow someone, then when they put out a new release, it will come up in your, um, in your, your kind of feed of new, new releases. And this song came on the other day, Dawn. And I was just immediately brought into such a deep, state and I can feel now that you've shared behind the the backstory I can just feel I can feel your beloved one's presence and the gift that you are offering in this piece from the deepest parts of your heart it really takes you to such an incredible meditative space so everyone go listen to this beautiful new song and others. I have to say, I Am Alive is another favorite of mine, which we might hear later, I think. <laughs> yes. <laughs> and, and I believe you. that you're, we kind of set it up that you would be able to acknowledge your teacher, who's our next presenter. Of course. <laughs> <laughs> She's the best. Do you want to say something first and then I will share her bio? or? How about you? How about you say something from the heart first? Well, I've met Nina about four years ago, and I just can't put into words how my life has changed. Just so many blessings and so much growth, and and like basically what you also shared earlier with really working. Yeah, of course, there's blessings of joy and we want that. We want to be in the positive realm of things. But then what do we do? How do we navigate through grief and through heartbreak? And all? like, how do we actually see the gra gratitude in that and the blessing in that? And how do we uh, grow and, and really accept? And so that's basically like, in a nutshell, the, the wisdom pearls just... Nina provides this magical waterfall that just washes over us and showers us with so much wisdom. So I'm just so grateful to have her in my life as a mentor and yeah, as Aww. family. So yeah. Thank so, you, Johnny. Love you so much. Oh, so yeah. beautiful. And Nina, I'm so glad the minute Dawn was sharing about you. I knew that you that I wanted to welcome you to the show tonight and that you were the perfect 
um, the perfect teacher to invite to step into this first day of the new year and that it was it was meant to be. So thank you for saying yes. Thank you for for showing up for us all tonight. And I'm just going to share a little bit about about you from your bio just for a minute. Um, Nina Palmieri is a master educator, Nawal woman and wisdom keeper who shares her gift of divine perception to bring clarity and guide one home to their authentic self so that we can take personal responsibility for our lives. As a clear channel of the divine mother, her ever-growing community considers her a light-bearing guide and mentor. Nina, Nina is the founder of a New Earth Movement and has been given insight and divine understanding on how to create a model for transformation, personal freedom, and happiness. Through a grounded, heartfelt, and powerful approach, Nina is clear and impeccable channel of divine truth and wisdom. She has studied in e extensively in mystery schools with Don Miguel Ruiz, Doña Barbara Emrys, and other respected elders and wisdom keepers. She is an initiated Nawal woman who combines indigenous wisdom with a Toltec approach for life altering classes and programs. She leads rituals, ceremonies, and healing retreats, including power journeys to various destinations in the US and around the world. And we'll find out more about her website at the end. But Nina, welcome and thank you for, for bringing us into 2022. No, thank you so much. Thank you for receiving me and inviting me. And I've learned uh, on my path to say yes to life. So when Donnie just said, can you speak in New Year's Eve about the great awakening and, you know, New Year's evolutions? I said, yes, I'm here. I'm there. What else is there to talk about in this moment, in this great moment? It's really actually an exciting time to be alive. And as Scott was talking earlier, there's, there's a lot of growing pains. There's labor pains as we go through this great awakening. And I feel that the world is so hungry and so thirsty for the truth and for direction and for, for a way to have the wisdom to guide us home so that we can really birth this new world into being. And we have free will. So it's, it's really important. What we're doing here this evening is so important to help to bring inspiration to the people and to help us to just remember the truth. And so this morning I was in my reflective morning time and just asking for a message for this evening. And it was, it became very clear about how to help to help us to bridge this great awakening is the path of love, the path of the heart. And everybody has already spoken about it in their own way. Um, love is the key and love is such a maybe a charged word because there's so much meaning that we give to it and conditions and ideas but beyond that form and the idea of love is the pure presence of who we are and that's what we are yearning to come home to at this time and what we really have to remember how to operate from love and be vigilant. There's no more time to waste. And for me, I feel like it's this urgency at this time to really be impeccable, to really um, to do our part, to unlock the illusions of our separation from God, from the divine, from love, and to, to open up the portal to the path of the heart. Because right now we are in chaos, we're in the changes, we're in the transformation, we're in this three-dimensional world of illusion. And when we open up to the heart and to love, we move into another dimension. It's a thing that lifts us up out of our illusions into, a, into the state of grace 
into what it is that we're desiring to be. And we have the power. We have, we are pure potential. We're, if you, if you look around and you listen to people speaking about what's happening in the world, there's a lot of blaming and pointing fingers and, you know, this needs to change out here. This needs to change there. But really, we need to do our part to be the thing that we want everybody else to be. We need to be the living message. And we are the living message underneath our masks, underneath our wounding. And really, you know, as our dear sister said in the beginning, the, the path of silence is how we can get into to love. And the quietude is where we find God, is where we find love. And so at this time, we need to stop, pause, let go of the things that are, are continuing and perpetuating that illusion. And we know ourselves intimately. It takes it takes awareness, it takes courage to come within and to say, I don't need that anymore, that resentment, that criticism, or the, the judgments, the judgments of ourselves or the judgments of others, and, and to put it down and to choose love, to choose an act of kindness, to choose compassion, to choose to reach out our hands in a time when maybe we are just feeling really like stubborn or really um, selfish or defeated or sad to, to honor the sadness, but to also to reach out, to look out of our eyes and to connect with somebody else's eyes, to make time for the meaningful moments to allow this love to pour through us so that we can lift up out of the illusion. The illusion of our separation from the divine is, is in our mind, it's our story. It's all of these ideas of who and what we think we are and we're on like rerun, rerun. The pattern keeps going. And so for us to take a pause and to do our part to put it down and to do our part to let the love come out to no longer withhold, to no longer withhold our love and let it come out of us for no reason, to do maybe the opposite of what we have done in the past in those patterns that keep getting triggered because we all have them. No matter how spiritual we think we are, we all have the patterns, we all have the defenses, we all have those, those moments where we come into form and we withhold our love or we perpetuate our own suffering, but to catch it and to say, no, that's not the truth. That's not who I am. And to, to go in a different direction is the way that we can create a tidal wave of, what, of love. We could change internally and that frequency is what's gonna change the world. Again, we're wanting the world to change, but we have to change our own world. And the world is here, the illusionary world. We have to change that. We have to, to, to align it with the heart. I was thinking too this morning that this love is the path of the heart. And it's like the portal into this other dimension. It's like the, it's not necessarily the organ but it's like the, the spiritual heart where our wings take flight, where we go into another, another realm of an existence that is the truth of who we are. And we've all experienced it because we are it. That's undeniable. But we've experienced it in times of maybe unexpected events or um, looking into a beloved's eyes or hiking the summit of a mountain and or seeing a sunset or a sudden death where everything that you thought was real just dissolves and this force of love comes through. And so I would say for us to go forward from this moment on in this New Year's revolution, evolution, and to, to choose to love in these moments 
where it's difficult, where we want to separate, where we want to say, no, you're wrong, where we want, we want to keep that um, resentment going and rather we forgive, maybe pray for that person instead of holding a grudge, maybe instead of staying small in your idea of what just happened to see from the greater perspective of compassion, of, of greater understanding. And that just unlocks the door into these other realms, into the higher dimension, into where it is that we're wanting to go, into what it is that we're wanting to usher in in this great awakening. It's a ripple. It's a, a ripple, a tidal wave of love that is contagious and that we have the power to, to be part of, to birth. It is who we truly are. And to me, that's so, it's so empowering. It's so inspiring. It's the biggest gift to wake up to who we are. And if we forget, it's okay. We forgive ourselves and we go forward. So I thank you for this opportunity of being here. I thank you for being part of this, this global transformation on this amazing time on the planet to be with all of you and to do my part and for us to do our part. So thank you. And Nina, there's so many comments uh, coming in from the chat box from our wonderful people, really inspired by you. And you're new to our show, new to meeting me. And I'm really appreciating that you have this very diverse cultural background. And as you spoke, um, you frequently you know, spoke of the illusion of separation and breaking out of the illusion. But I also really felt your compassion for the human moments that we all have, um, including teachers such as yourself. I'm just curious, do you have a, a simple practice that you could share um, of when you find yourself caught in the illusion, caught in a, a more human moment, what do you do to, to come out of that or to remember the bigger picture or to remember, to remember love? Uh, it's a great question because <laughs> we all get we all have that moment yeah. and um for me you know on my path uh, when i was in uh, immersed in a mystery school i realized years in that that if the judgment wasn't there i would have excelled a lot quicker and i had to see that and learn that right so um you know, when that comes in, and it comes in in all different forms for us to go forward and actually to love what we're seeing, rather than like, we want to kick it out, we want to push it out, we want to be like, I'm done with that, for, you know, get out of here, you know, bring it in and hold it, and feel your presence, like the way that you love your child, or an animal, or the sunset, you love the aspect of you that's being revealed, that's the, the hook, and when you love it, that helps it to see that it doesn't have any power over you. I interpret that to mean you're really talking about embracing what we might call our shadow side, mm -hmm. you know, the parts of ourself that, that we might have shame or embarrassment about that we hide, but to bring it out of the shadow into the light and love it like we would love a child. That's a beautiful, a beautiful and really important reminder. Thank yeah. you. It's alchemizing. Yeah. Because it's all, I like to always say, it's all God experiencing itself. Mm -hmm. you know? um, it's all life experiencing itself. Mm -hmm. So um, you've, you're very generous <laughs> in looking at all that you provide. You provide a lot of beautiful events, many of which are free. So to learn more about Nina, uh, and I love that she, her website is a new earth movement.org a new earth movement.org. Uh, and I love that I for many years produced a show called New Earth News. So I, I love this. If you go to her website, there's a lot happening, a lot of wonderful things here. Um, I'm going to take us to her calendar. Um, because she's got uh, coming up this Wednesday, uh, January 5th, just a couple of days from now, uh, two events. Um, you've got a regular community prayer. Tell us a little bit about this for a moment. Yeah, every Wednesday at 5 p.m. Pacific time, I lead a community prayer. And that was inspired um, right before we had 
the lockdown, whenever, however long ago that was, like you were saying, Scott, things have transformed. We never thought it would be where what has evolved online and the power that can come through online is amazing too. Um, but anyway, so this has become our, our weekly prayer and everyone is invited who wants to join in and to be immersed in really the state of grace with the divine and to spread that love to the world. And, and so, yeah. Beautiful. Thank you. And then and the other event also happening on Wednesday the 5th, this is something you kind of put together really for, for in coordination with today. Yes. And it's called Aligning with the New Earth. Uh, tell us, at Aligning with the New Year, tell us about this teleclass that you're offering. Yeah, it's a, it was inspired by this event tonight, just wanting to offer something to anybody who was feeling called to receive a message and really when we do these offerings there's a message that comes through and and usually something that helps us to align with that message and meditation a transmission an opening for the people to receive insights and to really receive tools to go home and help to bridge this into their and everyday world everyday living so something to inspire you to to go to this next dimension to open up to the path of the heart and to receive the holy light at this time because it is a holy time beautiful well i'm planning on being there i've put it into my calendar so i look forward to seeing you on wednesday it's so great thank you so much and wonderful to have you on our show and i hope that we can have you on again maybe on one of our other shows where we can go even more deeper because you have a lot to share thank you so much for having me again i'm happy to be here and here's Kristen to take oh. us in the next direction. Nina, that was so profound. I really felt your message sink into my heart on a very deep level. And my feeling in my body is that I've been able to step more into a whole me experience. I don't know if that makes sense, but I really felt like something just grounded in my whole being. And yeah. thank you. Thank you. Thank you, thank you for sharing. So I know we've been sitting for a bit and we have some movement coming up and some music and we are blessed to have Keishi Chai here this evening. Keishi and I have been friends and collaborators for years and I know that this community has gotten to experience her gifts so many times now or, or a few times I think, right? A few times, but we are going to um, go on a journey with Keishi and um, let me just tell you a little bit about Keishi. Keishi Chai is a New York City-based performer, theatrical director, teacher, trainer, and award-winning designer. She co-founded the professional dance company and school, Belly Queen, and Pure, which, is, which breaks down into Public Urban Ritual Experiment, aka Pure, a global community focused on healing and social change through dance and music. And Keishi really does do just that. She uses music as a vehicle for awakening, awareness, transformation, and so many beings to come together, regardless of age, size, background. She has really magnetized every kind of person into one space and everyone's moving together. I have cried tears multiple times witnessing um, the miracles that Keishi has, uh, has brought forth and just the open spaces that she's held for so many people to discover themselves. So Keishi, welcome, welcome. Keishi's gonna share an experience and then we are going to dive into a collaboration. Thank you so much, Kristen. Welcome everybody. I've just been so uplifted by their, everything I've been hearing so far. I am tuning in from New York. I will be moving to San Francisco soon, so I'll be bi-coastal. I really resonated with what Sister Jenner said about um, letting go of criticism, comparison, competition. I would like to offer up a couple more C's that we can embrace, like community, uh, creativity, compassion, connection, and uh, we can let go of judgment and listen more, right? So that goes for ourselves as well. Um, a large part of what I do is to reconnect people to themselves and their bodies. So if you are judging the parts of your body that are in pain, um, 
it's time to send some love, some breath there. It's a metaphor for entering into 2022 as well. Recently, because of the rise of infections I, um, of the virus, I needed to cancel two in-person events. And I also canceled um, a holiday well, back to Michigan to visit my husband's family. So we needed to let go of that. So this is really about letting go and receiving. And before we dive into some movement, I just wanted to um, let you know that I made this outfit yesterday. Well, at 3 a.m. Oh, <laughs> <this my morning>. <laughs> I went into some fabric scraps that were sitting in the corner of a room and I thought, let me repurpose this. So that was leaning into creativity. So it's making its debut today for you. And uh, the music I'm going to be playing is called Body Mandala, which in Tibetan means Circle of Awakening. And it's by a friend called D Drum Spider. And the illustration behind me is Dante's Nine Spheres. So he journeys from hell uh, through purgatory to heaven or paradiso. And we have the Nine Spheres, which is a medieval rendition of the cosmos and the planets. And he gets to speak with God and the angels um, by the end of his journey. So I just wanted to give a little shout out to what we're going to be listening to and dancing with. All right. So I invite you to join me and modify however you need to um, listen to your body. And we're going to begin. So I'm going to stand up and you can stay sitting if you want. I invite you to stand with me if you can. Let's take a moment to breathe in, reach both arms up, inhale, and exhale down. Widen your stance, lift up, inhale, and exhale. Last time up, and down. Let's shake out the hands, let's shake out the feet. Take a deep breath in, and exhale out. Let's make two fists. We're going to circle the right ankle and your hands. And let's come in, breathe. Fingers long, circle that left ankle out. The circle is a magical shape. Let's bring it in. So if you're ever feeling stuck energy, bring some circles to that joint. Let's circle our knees. Sending some gratitude to our knees and change direction, moving to the left. And breathe. Keep going. I'm just going to make sure my sound is a good volume for you. And let's circle our chest, moving to the left. Crown reaches up toward the sky and change direction. Let's circle to the right. Whenever we circle, we're activating the synovial fluid in our joints. Let's circle the shoulders back and down one at a time. We often carry a lot of tension in our shoulders. So feel a sense of length through your spine. Your crown is floating up like a balloon. And circle your shoulders front. Release your shoulders down with gravity. Make sure that your jaws relax. Lift the shoulders up and release. You can let out an audible sigh. Ha! Let's do that two more times. Inhale up and exhale. Let go. Let go of self judgment. Inhale. Exhale. Let go of how other people see you. Letting go of stress. Letting go of tension. Letting it be recycled into our precious earth. And let's just gently bounce our legs. Heavy fingers, let the hands float up, inhale. And now let's reach that right arm up, reach the left arm up, bend that left knee. Feel a sense of length through your side waist. Last time right, last time left. Let's release the right hand down, spiral the right thumb back and gently lean to the left. 
Bring the right hand to your low back, angle your chin in, stretching into your upper trapezius. And let's release the left arm down and melt one vertebrae at a time, hanging like a rag doll, drifting over to your right. Slowly rise, stretching your back body, facing front, left thumb spirals back, gently lean to the right, opening up space in your neck. Breathing deep into your belly. Exhale, left hand to your low back, chin in. Stretching into your upper back. And release that right hand down and slowly melt. And slowly move yourself over to the other side and come up. And bring both hands high, connecting the palms. Thank you very much for joining me in that movement. And now, Kristen and I, we're going to create a spontaneous offering for you. Okay. Oh, and your candles are already lit? I am not <laughs> lighting my candles oh, right oh, now. Oh, they're not lit yet. Okay. So we are going to dive into a piece that was born... Um, it's called Sundance. It was born out of my soul ohm practice, which I describe as light soul weaving with ohm, the vibration of the universe. And so about half of this piece is kind of written or it was birthed before and then half of it is spontaneous. And it's all about looking within and tapping into your internal sun and then sending your light out into the world and also just opening so that as we are moving and singing that you can receive the light there's this kind of uh motion of of we're dancing we are dancing creatively into your sun and together we are reflecting with each other so feel connected to your light in this song and feel yourself just growing 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 in your potential to share light with the world and and send it out, send it out. Are you all candles lit, Casey? Okay, here we go. Let's see.
together as one See our hearts connected Oh, feel our hearts connected Oh, one light and one love <sighs> One light I've got tears. I've got oh. tears. It's just so beautiful, my <laughs> God. The combination of your exquisite dance and your exquisite music. Oh, thank you. Oh, that was a pure joy. Thank you, Casey. Every single time in this life that I get to weave with you, I... I'm just so grateful. I love you so much. Oh, I love you, Kristen. What a Thanks. magnificent way to start the new year. Truly is an honor. So many comments from our friends in the Zoom room saying this too, just how wonderful it is to start the new year this way. And um, a reminder that Keishi's website, all things Keishi, um, live at K-A-E-S-H-I, her name, Keishi.com. And um, you've got some good stuff happening. You're doing online classes, your belly queen classes. And tell us about what's happening next Saturday. Oh, we're featuring a wonderful dancer called Sanchelle Brown, and she is uh, contemporary trained, and she also specializes in African dance. So she'll be teaching some basic movements, and that will be next Saturday night. Yeah, and we have daily classes online, so people can tune in from all over the world. And they wow. do. That's mm -hmm. so, so the best way for people to reach you is to go to your website and uh, contact you this way? Yeah, they can go to Keishi.com and, and just click and then you'll get sent to the correct place where you okay. can find out more information. Fantastic. Uh, you know, again, when Kristen and I were putting together the show, it was like, do you think we need Keishi to dance again? So <laughs> just such a, an incredible highlight. You know? And isn't it beautiful? that we've got people of such diverse ages and so many different cultures tonight. And that's so what I want us to be doing with this show. I mean, we've got people from Jamaica and Toltec and Germany and Casey and just all these beautiful different cultures, all sharing love and creative expression. <sighs> thank you. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Oh. Okay, well, the energy is just going to keep flowing. I know whenever Chief Phil enters the room, we are going to be inspired and it's going to get intense and beautiful. And it's going to just help open your heart. Right? Chief Phil delivers a powerful message. And let me just tell you a little bit about him. Hereditary Chief Phil Lane Jr. is an enrolled member of the, I hope I'm saying this right, and correct me, Dakshi, if I'm saying, Yangtan? Yeah, Yangtan. Yangtan, Dakota yeah. and Chickasaw nations, <coughs> and is an internationally recognized leader in human and community development. He has extensive experience in his own cultural traditions, is an award-winning author and film producer, and holds master's degrees in education from National University, Public Administration from the University of Washington, and was awarded a global fellowship to attend the Institute of Arts Administration Summer Intensive, Harvard School of Business, Harvard University. Wow, I didn't ever know that about you. That's incredible, learning something new every day. I have had the honor to travel with Chief Phil on a couple of incredible journeys. We first met in Ethiopia, um, a few years ago on a Unity Earth journey. And immediately I knew we were family reconnecting and uh, carrying forth our missions together on this planet at such an important time. Chief, I turn it over to you. Thank you so much for being here with us. Thank you so much, Tosa.
thank you so much. And I want to thank every person, beginning with Sister Jenna right up the line, Brother Scott, hosting everyone for sharing, because it was like a beautiful tapestry unfolding. And I want to share that from my depths of my heart, I believe that with Enlightening Our Way Together in this 2022, we've embarked on a nine year plan, a nine year vision. The vision of that nine years, the goal of that nine years is the end of war and the beginning of peace. What does that mean? The end of war, it means that the nation states of Mother Earth before or by 2030 will come together out of necessity and by binding treaty end war upon Mother Earth. Now, how that's going to exactly happen, I'm not sure. But I do know that we are awakening. In fact, I thought to myself, the naming of this program, Awakening, is exactly what's happening. And we can see that, that not just ourselves, but you can see, as we know, with Unity Earth, I know they have the same vision. You see the drive that's gone on that's really thank, so thankful for the work. You can see the charter of compassion. We have the guiding principles, our 16 indigenous principles for building a sustainable, harmonious world. You know, all the different foundations of all our efforts. If you really look at the foundation, the principles, we're in unity. We're in unity. So what's our challenge? I believe our challenge at this time is to really get down to the foundation of this nine year plan. And that foundation of this vision is to understand fully that each and every one of us is a sovereignty, ancient, imperishable and everlasting. And that's how we're born to this world of time and space. And even more so at the foundation, at the very foundation of rural peace, at the foundation of the transformation of, to a new global society, not one alluded to by all these deals where, you know, we're going to have, uh, you know, a few people take care of everybody. We're talking about something based on this understanding of justice. And so we think to ourselves, okay, what is that? And that is the understanding of the prior unity and oneness of our human family. The prior unity, that part when we meditate, when we close our eyes and we go back to that place where that pure potentiality we talked about pure potentiality is forever because the actualization of potentiality creates more potentiality is endless we were one from the very beginning from one seed with all of creation intimately related and that's why the natural laws governing the physical universe are everywhere in the universe the atomic chart that's how come we're able to begin to understand this physical place of time and space we live in. But as we've talked about, we are way, way more than that. We are way more than this physical earth suit here. And so here we are, getting ready to embark on this journey to 2030. The UN Sustainable Goals are with us. Many others are with us. And we can, we, if we choose to, we can participate. We can participate in this adversarial partisan political process, which is collapsing. Because it's not based on the understanding that every single human being is one with all other human beings. And the hurt of one is a hurt of all, and the honor of one is honor of all, which requires removal of all prejudice of any form, of any form, anything that causes us to feel ourselves better than or less than somebody else as another human being. In fact, I was thinking about the world of names, how we have to go beyond the world of names and titles. And so that's why I wanna say, you know, I wanna be just brother Phil, uncle Phil, because one of the great teachings of our Dakota people said, we must not rest until we make everybody we know, a brother, sister, father, mother, aunt, uncle, niece, nephew, grandfather, grandson, brother, sister, then we'll know exactly how to treat them. We'll know exactly how to treat them. 
And that means that no matter if you're 77 winners, you're 25 winners, the journey is, is the same. And that journey is right here, right here. And, you know, it means as well as a human family, 7 billion human beings, each caring for their lives as much as we care for our life. And if we want to think we don't think that's different, try to harm somebody's children from another culture. It'll show you real quickly how much we treasure each of us that life. So here we are, 7 billion human beings on this mother, beloved Mother Earth. And we can see at the present time, this lack of understanding spiritually that we are one human family and the herd of one is a herd of all, which means just basically that there should be no human being on the face of Mother Earth today going without water, children today while we're sitting here in this beautiful, beautiful space to have the opportunity to talk about these next nine years, to talk about then the 25 that'll go to uh, 2047, because I think it's a 25 year vision. The first is the end of war. And the way this is moving, and that's why I'm saying we go into that side, the prophecies are very clear. And we have that you know, all documented well, but that's the thing. This understanding that we're one human family needs to be taught at every school, everywhere. It needs to be proclaimed. We are one human family. And even more so, I really love this new book Brother Gary Zukoff has written, The Universal Human. We are universal humans with all the richness of all that have gone before us because each and every one of us is and are the spiritual representative of all that have gone before us. Now, some of us might have a hereditary role or whatever, but we have to even go beyond that. We have to really, truly, first of all, understand we are one human family and not allow any divisions. That doesn't mean we don't respect each other. But I'm talking about in a way that, that um, in any way causes us, even though we have all these principles we all agree to. I'm sure you wouldn't go through the 16 indigenous principles of building a sustainable, harmonious world. We'd all agree. Or the 16 articles of our international treaty to protect and restore Mother Earth, most would agree. Or when I look at the Earth Charter, I agree. Or I look at uh, the Charter of Compassion, I agree. Or Sign Network, their foundation, which happens to be the 16 principles, I agree. The thing is, one thing is agreeing on these principles. Another thing is being these principles. I think that's what we're called to be in 2022, to be these principles, to be this way. That means that I need whatever I carry around from my own intergenerational trauma, the fact my mom and dad went to Indian boarding schools. I was born in Indian boarding school. So what? I mean, what I mean is so what? It, it was a lot. But everything our human family's been through is time to let go all pre preconceived ideas. We are in a new day, a new time. And it's gonna take brand new relationships. What served us in the past is not gonna serve us for the future. And so what I see is stand in our strengths, stand in our strengths. Those spiritual strengths that each and every one of us have. And we've heard all evening, stand in those strengths, move towards the positive alternative we wish to create without giving away our energy fighting the negative. I want to close with this again my thanksgiving and i'm i'm 100 percent with you but i want to just share I, I i thought to myself you know get to be 77 winners you realize like my dad said we're only here for a short time we're only here for a very short time very short and you find that out <laughs> i'm sure i'll find it out even more as i go along but i just want to share that this is these are the insights that have come to me from reflecting on the world spiritual, from the Mahabharata to the Quran to, to the Zindavesta to uh, the Kitabi Agan, those very, all those very holy books, plus visiting with elders. This is my understanding of who we are. This is important. Who are we? That's the question I think we have to really look inside and answer ourselves here in this first year of this nine year plan to end war. Our soul is independent of and the very source of our body's existence. 
If our body is destroyed, our soul and spirit remain unharmed. Our soul, our human spirit, is independent of our physical body. Our soul is free and sanctified beyond this physical plane of time and space. So important to remember. All the powers that distinguish us as human beings, reason, memory, abstract thought, creativeness, inventiveness, willpower, are all property of the soul, not the body. A love that anyone have had, may have had for anyone will not be forgotten in the spiritual worlds, nor will we forget the life we had in this physical world. In the spiritual world, we will recognize one another. We will seek union, a spiritual union. The relationship for our soul with our body is like the connection between a lamp and a mirror. If the mirror is polished and perfected, the light of the lamp appears. But the, but the mirror is broken or covered with dust, the light remains concealed. Our rational soul, the human soul, does not descend into our bodies or exist through our physical bodies. It is just the opposite. Our soul is the very substance and foundation upon which our body depends for existence. The soul has no gender, race, ethnicity, or class. This reality makes all forms of prejudice, whatever they may be, intolerable and acceptable. The soul is not divided, is reflection of the oneness of our creator. Last one here. Our soul is endowed from our beginning in this physical world of time and space with its own individuality. Our soul does not acquire it because of our body. The individuality and identity of our soul are strengthened in this physical world through our spiritual tests and challenges. So this is the beginning of this incredible nine-year plan, nine-year vision. All the prophecies back it up. We are at that time, as Sister Jenna said, that all the visionaries, seers, spiritual teachers, spiritual messengers have prophesied and foretold for thousands of years. We are here now. We all, each and every one of us, have been called to this vision. And especially, I want to reach out to my elders of my age, because we, we are right now on this Mother Earth, those primarily responsible for the mess we find ourselves in. My, my generation. So, I think I probably, I don't know how long I've gone off, but, you know, I just want to share that much and say, I'm so thankful for this awakening. It is the time of awakening. Thank you. Well, Phil, it, we love you so much. And again, when Kristen and I were putting the show together, it's like, okay, for our first show for the awakening world, we've got to bring on Brother Chief Phil. Uh, and I'm excited. You've got a brand new website. This is it. This is the first time you're showing your yes, new website yes, to the yes. world. Tell us about it. Well, um, my nephew, Michael Karras, Karras uh, has been working on this. It's just kind of in, in, its, in its implementation stage. I think it go up, but we're really focusing on that there is the dawning of a new global civilization. This really looks at what do we do to, to fulfill this? What are the plans? What does it look like? What are the prophecies? Because the prophecies are clear. When we come from oneness, we can see certain guiding principles emerging, but we also see literally institutions. So that's what it's focusing on, this new global civilization that we're all working on. It's a, a beautiful website. And the um, way to get there, everybody, it's uh, his organization is the Four Worlds International Institute. So it's uh, the acronym for that, F-W-I-I, -I, Four Worlds International Institute, dot earth, F-W-I-I -I dot earth. Yeah. Um, and then for more information, uh, his previous um, website, a site that still exists and is quite beautiful um, is fwii.net. So that's where we can you know go and learn all about Chief Phil and so many things that he's doing. And definitely, please, when you go there, always make sure when you go to these websites we give out, always sign up so that they've got your email address so you can keep in touch with all the wonderful things that Chief Phil is doing. And Phil, you did a great job, by the way, with... Um, the series that you just completed last week. Thank you so much for that. Oh, it was beautiful, just beautiful. And I really enjoyed watching you and the guests that you had. And uh, again, just here we are all linking arms online. Absolutely. You know? 
and, and, and we got to thank John Raymer. And of course, whenever we pop mention, mention uh, John, we've got to mention his beloved wife, Summer, because, you know, there are two peas in the pod. Of course. And the two, the two of them, I mean, I mean, you know, I was talking about, well, the seven days of rest, brother, because I'm really, I'm really into the seven days of rest. I'm eating yeah. food and all different things. And he said, well, it's not my seven days. <laughs> he said, I'm busy putting these out over a hundred different networks, just like tonight. So we got to thank John because he's he and Summer are behind the scenes here. Yeah. And by the way, last thing, I don't, your song, I tell you what, uh, I don't know how you do this on Zoom. I mean, you, I, I, I know how you do it in person. I, I've been there, but how on Zoom you are able to to because it's all about frequency. Healing is about frequency. Like both Tesla and Einstein says, the future of healing is frequency. And you have that frequency. That's why music is so core to the healing process. It's always used in our ceremonies. It's, it is healing. Oh, thank thank you, you so much. Thank, thank you. you. Mm -hmm. I, you know, it's taken a lot of caring time and commitment to figure out and test so many different configurations to find the vehicle that, su that can support emotion coming through zoom and when i got it in the beginning of you know in the first few months of the pandemic i i there was a day where i said oh i think i saw people crying during one during one event and i said oh i think i'm getting somewhere and when you see when you realize people are are being touched and there's some tears then you know you have have been able to communicate as a musician. And so I'm constantly working and honing and just honing also my being so that I can show up and, and just let spirit and, and the message come through um, as it wants to. And um, thank you. You're such an inspiration, Chief Phil. I want to say one, I want to yeah. say one quick add. Your, it was during your song, it was at 5.44 PM PDT on June 20th, 2020, in your song, right there at 544, that the union of the condor, the quetzal, and the eagle was formed, and the prophecy of the reunion of the condor and the quetzal and the eagle was was fulfilled at that moment. Oh. Now people can think I'm crazy. That's all right. With the insanity in the world, I like to be considered crazy. <laughs> in a way. But it's true. These things are happening. We live in a mystical world. The creator's faith is mystical. <laughs> it is i remember that night so clearly i remember feeling like an electricity moving through my whole being as we were sharing that night it was it's it was so powerful and i i just remember the whole evening viscerally well it was nighttime here for me um I'm sure for other people it was day but <laughs> thank you i'm so grateful and and if thank you Thank you. I want to take a minute to just read a couple comments from our, because we've got such a wonderful global peace tribe writing away. Ayata writes, thank you, Chief Phil, for another potent, loving, and lightning message. I love how energized I always feel every time you speak and share with us. And it's, I think that's a really, really accurate. And then um, two comments um, and Mary Noonan writes, Chief Phil Lane, he is the sacred masculine embodied. And I agree with that one also. Um, and then a couple of comments about uh, your music, Christian. Now, on the one hand, we've got Kishi Chai, who writes, um, I don't want to find it right here. It was quite beautiful. Christian is a powerful healer. Her voice pierces and cracks open many hearts. Absolutely. Mm -hmm. But I also like the way Jamie Lee puts it. Her voice would bring Godzilla to tears. <laughs> I may have to use that. That that's should be a, a quote one. moving forward. That's a good one. That's, that's a keeper. That's great. Thank you. I love it. Chief, Chief love Phil, it. we love you so much. And I'll see you again very, very soon. Thank you, Chief <laughs> Phil. Thank you, Dakshi. Your, your message is so, so powerful in our hearts to bring us into this new year. And so we're coming close to our close we're i know we're running a little bit behind in time but we would not be complete without a little bit more music to just help us to celebrate our existence and celebrate being in these bodies and being able to share in music and let the messages of today just sink into our hearts and and expand our um our awareness ever more so so 
I'd like to welcome back Dawn Redson, and I think she's going to be playing this beautiful song called I Am Alive. Yes, you are correct about that. <laughs> Thank you so much, Dawn Red Sun, for blessing us with your presence, with your voice. Very inspiring. And everybody, go to Spotify, Dawn Red Sun. And Dawn, will you come back and be on our show again? Yes, please. <laughs> oh, we would love that. We would love that. 
You are I would just, love that. <laughs> what a wonderful way to start the new year with a wonderful new voice for the awakening world. And your music is really helping us to feel that inspiration. That song was so inspiring. Um, so thank you very much. It's just wonderful to have you with us. Thank you. Thank you for having me. Mm. Absolutely. <sighs> You are getting, getting an echo. An echo. Is, everyone is everyone else getting an echo? An echo? Yeah. 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 You're getting getting an echo also. Also. Do you have two computers on? Or Oh, there, oh, we, there go. we go. I, uh, uh. Yeah. It's not my two computers. There we go. I think we're okay now. Whoever, Whoever it was. was. No? no. It's all happening. It was Fanny and Vigari. Um, so I muted them. So we are still, still all of our, of our homes. homes. Oh, oh, it's, it's happening. happening. Oh. I'm going to mute Valerie. I think it might have been Valerie. Um, but that's the good, good news. news. Uh, uh, Valerie, you got to. Oh. Who is it? That... It was Valerie because when she unmuted for a second, it started okay. again. So. Uh, okay. But the good news is Valerie Romanoff is going to be with us to kick off the after show. So what an amazing start to the awakening world. Um, and one of the things that is going to be really fun is every weekend we are going to tackle a different topic. And um, I want to bring on now my co-host for next week's show. Uh, again, one of my favorite human beings, getting to know Kristen, getting to know Larissa Stowe has just been highlights of my year. I mean, both of you are just such exquisite human beings that I get to play with. And so next weekend, Larissa and I are putting together um, three shows, the Friday night show, the Saturday night show, and the Sacred Sunday show. And Larissa, tell us a little bit about the Weevolution and some of your friends that are gonna be joining us. And welcome. Well, Scott, I have to say that you, what you and Deborah have been creating and Kristen tonight, this is like the perfect example of the weevolution, which is weaving, weaving together sacred gifts, uplifting humanity, linking hearts, linking arms together and a unified vision of what we are walking towards and what we want to create in this world together not looking at it so much as like, okay, I have a personal mission, but starting to open to that, that bigger view of seeing how we as a collective have this heart and soul mission to bring heaven on earth and what that looks like. And you all are doing it so beautifully. It's like, my goodness, my God, <laughs> like hearing Kristen, like, oh my, Ugh, just just so heart opening so incredibly heart opening and chief phil and then hearing um dawn it, yeah it's just all this beautiful weaving so we're going to be sharing next week um from different points Oops. her who has created a weevolution um we're going to be bringing her on um we're going to be bringing 
Jason, who works with me in Larissa Shakti Love Warriors. He's one of the most inspiring people I know that's really about the weevolution and weaving gifts and walking forward in a united vision. So we're going to be sharing how everyone can create a weevolution and link up, like what we can do to be a part of the solution in the world. Beautiful. Um, so I want to remind everybody that we really want to start including you. So please join Larissa and I, and we're going to have a couple of wonderful guests on Friday night, our Friday night show. It's the same. It's basically replacing what I've been doing with Straight Talk. Um, I've been doing Straight Talk with Trish every Friday night at 7.30 Pacific time. I know it's a little bit late for you East Coasters, but come on, it's Friday night. You know, you guys can stay up a little bit later on Friday night. Um, and so Friday night, we're going to open it up. It's a Zoom meeting, and we're going to be very interactive. And the next Saturday night, uh, it's going to be like, Larissa, we've, uh, people are saying, I missed Larissa's song at the beginning, because as you all know, for Saturday Night Live, we always started with our trailer, which was Larissa's beautiful song. So we're going to have to come up with a new trailer. Um, so of course, we're going to have music with Larissa and Benj, and we have some magic, we have some really wonderful things. And then, of course, on Sunday morning, we're going to kind of tie it all together. So please join us next weekend. And um, Louisa, I'm so excited to be collaborating with you. Thank you so much. I know you have a daughter to sing to. Yeah. I do. Yeah, I, it's time to get my kiddo. Okay. The hubby's reading to her right now, but I'm supposed she's supposed to be asleep within a minute. And so okay. and I sing to her every night. So right. well, thank Doug for, you know, holding the fort. Thank you for joining us tonight. And of course, we'll be working with you all next weekend. So much love, Larissa. <laughs> Sorry, so I had to jump in before you left. <laughs> <laughs> so much love to you all. So appreciate you and look forward to collaborating next week. Yes. So much love. <laughs> Big hugs. <laughs> Big hugs. <laughs> what an amazing community we get. To oh, I love her. Right? Couple, couple more announcements. Um, we're actually going to start next week's Weevolution series on a Thursday night. Um, I was invited to help support something that's going on. And uh, of course, next Thursday is January 6th. And without getting into the politics of it, obviously a year ago on January 6th, there was a pretty big event that took place in America. And I think no matter what our political persuasion might be, we can all agree that it was very divisive. And so um, Gary Malkin, Christy Matthews, Amakela Gaston, and several others are putting together a very special event next Thursday night, January 6th. I'm gonna host it, um, create a Zoom room, and it's a gathering for the healing of America with love. So please, please join us. and whoever that is, please everybody keep yourselves muted. Um, Thursday, January 6th, six o'clock Pacific time. And that's really going to be the kickoff of our Revolution week, Thursday, Friday, Saturday, and Sunday. Because part of the Revolution is putting aside our differences and our divisiveness and understanding each other more fully and really healing that division. Um, the last announcement I want to make um, is to just really encourage everybody to come tomorrow morning to the Sacred Sunday show. Um, where we're all going to talk about what this awakening world means. And I'm really grateful to have two great guests, Reverend Bridge Feltis and Katrina Valencourt. That's 10 o'clock Pacific time tomorrow morning. And here's the Zoom room. Uh, Debbie Johnston, who's been doing a great job, will put that Zoom room link in for uh, into the chat box. So last thing I want to mention is, Anybody watching on Facebook, you still can come on in. We've got music with Kristen Hoffman about to happen. Then we've got an after show with Valerie Romanoff playing music and Fanny and Begari are with us. And we're gonna hear from all of you. We've got a really fun after show. So you can still come on into the Zoom room. Just go to globalpeacetribe.com and register. And, um, and we've got some really fun stuff planned for the after show. So Kristen, we did it. We did it. Another beautiful show. So perfect in terms of like bringing us into this new year with 
love, depth, grace, light, togetherness. I'm just so, so happy that we were able to uh, pull it off again. Absolutely. And um, to end the evening, to end the official show, right? It's not over. There's going to be an after show. But to end the official show, um, I decided to choose a piece from a record that I made called The Human Compass. And this piece is called Begin Again. And I thought, okay, this, this is encoded with the energy of restart and giving yourself that permission to just step into this moment and begin again or step into any moment and begin again. So as you are listening, please put your hands on your heart or whatever you need to do. Just give yourself that loving hug and really let yourself release anything that you carried into this first day of the new year. Let it live in the past and just just love yourself so much that you can be totally present in this new year and know that you've got everything you in your toolbox that you will need to make it through every day and every moment that comes your way. Okay. I love you all so much. Here we go. Begin again. It's time to move on It's time to let go Be the one Who always knows Just follow the hum The beating heart Be the seed of all
looking for something to believe in. Well, I can see now. I can believe that I am the song singing out. And when the needle starts falling, dance out loud to sing it out. Be the living and take this life in your Casey, I love you. Thank you for dancing again, Juwan. Yeah, Casey, I just ended up putting a spotlight <laughs> on both of you because your dance is so beautiful. It's so amazing. Oh. So, so before we conclude, I just want to remind everybody oh. to please support Kristen. She gives so much. She is just one of the most giving people I know. And there's a wonderful, really it's one of the best things you can do. Go to her website, which is her name, Kristen Hoffman, two N's at the end of Hoffman. And when you go there, go to her membership program. Um, and I want to really encourage you then you go to become a member and join her Patreon program. Now she offers way more than you can imagine. Uh, I, I came in as a crown member and she gives so much. Um, you get music once a month. She does a special Sonic Soul family event that's just beautiful. Um, and so this is a really important way for us to support our musical friends is through these Patreon offerings. Because um, with the pandemic, the days of being able to go to concerts, to go to clubs, go to festivals, all that's gotten curtailed or shut out. And we are living in an in online world. world. And so, you know, in this online world, Patreon is how we support the Kristen Hoffmans of the world. So please, please, please support her. Also, when you go to her website, buy her albums, buy her music. I mean, imagine being able to listen to Kristen all the time. So please support Aww. this wonderful, wonderful woman who, Kristen, I love collaborating with you. It's such a joy. Thank you, Scott. It is a, a true joy indeed. And you always do such an incredible job of promoting each artist and speaker and to receive. I'm ha I need a sip of tea. Sorry. <laughs> uh, I want to say to receive that gift is just so incredible. So thank you for um, supporting me as well. And I'm just eternally grateful. We'll so again, we'll do it again soon. We'll do it again soon. Dear ones, happy new year. We hug you with lots of energy, lots of love. And just know you've got it. You've got all the answers here in your heart, everything that you need. And just connect to this family of souls. We are all connected, as Chief Phil was saying. We are one people. You're never alone, even when you feel alone. And I know a lot of people have felt alone. You are not alone. You are loved, and you are woven together and connected. We love you so much. And we are, uh, we are concluding, but please stick around for the after show. Absolutely. Thank you so much, Kristen. Thank you. Okay.